We're entering into a new year. It's so exciting. Everything is fresh and new. But are you bringing a lot of clutter into the new year with you? Clutter fogs the mind. Clutter can stop us from our most clearest thinking. And what does clutter have to do with well-being anyway? Well, when you're not thinking clearly, when you're cluttered up with clutter, it makes it that much harder to function at your best. And we're talking about digital clutter and physical clutter. Hi, my name is Sharon, and I share information on how to improve your well-being. Today's topic is clutter. And I am coming to you as a non-type A person, <laughs> as a pretty free-flowing spirit, often with the attitude of, eh, whatever. <laughs> So what I'm saying is I don't have an organizational gene. Any organization I have in my body, I have had to work for it and learn, research and learn. And life has taught me. So it is not natural for me to be nice and neat and tidy. It is something that I have acquired. And I would still probably make type A folks cringe. But it works for me. So first up is digital clutter. What do I mean by digital clutter? When was the last time that you really assessed the content that you are consuming on your phone? So I'm not talking about apps and all these things. I'm talking about the actual time on your phone. Have you ever looked at your phone's well-being app to see how much time you're spending on each social media app or whatever. It will tell you these things. Have you looked at it? I did and I was shocked to see the time that I was wasting. It's, it was robbing me of my life. It was robbing me of my time being on some of these apps. Cluttering my mind with really things that do not serve my highest good. Yes, I do a lot of learning online. I do a lot of researching online, but I also was spending time on Facebook and watching reels and clips of Big Bang Theory and things like that. So the first thing you want to do is assess your digital time. How much time are you spending on your device? You can access your digital well-being app and check it out and set a limit on how much time you're spending. I realized that on one show, I got in the habit of watching it while I made dinner and then while I ate dinner. And so one episode went to two episodes, went to three episodes, robbing me of my time of really being in the present moment. So I limited it. So the next thing you can do is just limit the time that you are on your phone. Set a timer. Or say, I'm going to watch just one episode tonight. I'm not going to uh, binge watch the whole entire season or seasons or show. Set a limit. Keep to that limit. So look at the content that you are consuming. What are you watching? What, what are you watching the news? Are you consuming the news or negativity or things that just make you feel bad? I realized that I kind of fell into the habit of watching reels and... Then I just started feeling a little bit icky afterward, afterwards because it just, it didn't resonate with me. It wasn't the person I am. It's not who I am. And I was just really doing it out of boredom for no reason. So explore the content that you are consuming. There's a lot of good content out there and content that can be helpful. I was guided to divide my content into three categories. How to and spiritual and cultural. So that's been really exciting trying, you know, looking and finding uh, more wholesome content to consume when I do consume content on my phone. So now my content is more focused and it serves me better than just mindlessly scrolling or letting whatever comes up pop up. And even if I scroll past it, if it's something that is a little bit negative in nature or isn't for my highest good, 
I still saw it. I still consumed a little bit of it. So just be careful with your digital device. It can be a great tool to help you, but it can also rob you of your life. So assess that and take steps to help it to serve you. So next is what we're all familiar with, and that is physical clutter. It just piles up. And trust me, I live in a very small space and it piles up really, really quick. So as you look around your space, do you see random papers, receipts laying about, maybe coats that aren't put away, socks and shoes that aren't put away. And I know if you have kids or a significant other that doesn't put things away, it just makes it even more. But maybe look at what you can control right now, just your space. Do you have some things that are just kind of piled up? How about your dining room table? What's that looking like? Counters, what are they looking like? It happens and it happens to us all. And I'll tell you a little secret. It even happens to type A people. I've seen it, <laughs> but there is something you can do about it. So first thing you do is start in the place that you use the most. Start in the room where you spend the most time. For me, it was my office space. And my office space right now is taken over by Christmas stuff. So I am looking forward to the first so I can um, kind of reestablish my office space here. But first thing you do is take a look at that space. Remove everything that is not needed, that is not necessary for the function of that place. Just take it out. Now, there's, what do you do with this stuff you take out? Don't just leave it there. Look at it. Every place should have a home. You're gonna hear me say that over and over again. I live in a very small place and if I don't have a home for everything, it is chaotic in here. So everything has a home. So if it doesn't have a home, assign it a home. Donate, put it in the bin and leave it. <laughs> don't pull it back out guilty. <laughs> Put it in the bin, leave it, or gift it to someone, or purge it. Throw it away. It's broken. It's out of date. It's not used anymore. It's not necessary. Get rid of it. Okay, so you've removed everything, and you don't have a pile sitting there because it's been returned to its home. It's in a donate bin, or it is purged. So now evaluate your space. What is left over? Is it functional? So tidy it up and ask yourself these things. Now for me in my office space here, I had a problem. I have a storage problem up here, not a lot of storage. So I was having like little pouches of tape and office supplies and things that were just kind of falling all over the place. And so I found, I remembered, I had an old silverware box, a wooden silverware box that also works as a great riser for my computer. So it is now here and all my office supplies are organized neatly in this silverware box. So look for a way that you can make it more functional while you're at it. That also makes our lives a little bit easier when things are functional. Look at your area, remove what doesn't belong, evaluate what is left, make it more functional, tidy it up, and move on to your next area. Now you might find that the clutter is overwhelming. That is very possible and that does happen. Well then break the room into halves or quadrants. Look at one corner. Maybe just tackle one corner at a time or one half of the room at a time. You don't have to do the whole thing. If you're doing drawers or closets, one closet at a time, one drawer at a time, one cabinet at a time. Break things down in smaller, manageable steps. So here, your timer is your friend. So setting your timer to five, 10, 15, or 20 minutes, that will make you more motivated to begin because I know I only have to do it for 10 minutes. And if I wanna do it longer, I can. I know I only have to do it for 20 minutes, but if I wanna do it longer, I can. So it's a great way to get yourself started. And very often getting started is the hardest part. And once you 
do a little bit and get going and get the juices flowing, you don't want to stop. But if 20 minutes is up, you're done. Save it for another day. Save it for the afternoon whenever you decide. All right, one word of caution. Be careful of moving things from here to there and there to here and just kind of moving them around. Make sure they have a home or they're purged or they're donated. The goal is to handle things one time. Handle it just once. So once you do that, once everything has a home, you will be able to just put it back where it goes. And that will reduce your clutter in an incredible way. Now, this video is not going to cover how to get your kids to do that and how to get your husband or your wife or your significant other to do that. But start by setting the example. And a lot of times, especially children that are younger, they will follow along with you. Maybe uh, gold stars for putting things back in their home. There's, there's a lot of things you can do, but this is, this is just a little quick overview on how to get the clutter bit under control. So keep repeating until you have decluttered your entire home, including closets, drawers, garage. And this could take a long, you know, a, quite a few weeks, depending on the amount of clutter that you have. But if you take it bite by bite and then have everything have a home, you will find that it will be easier to keep up. My biggest tip is let it go. Let it go. It is so hard sometimes to part with an item. Sometimes it has sentimental value or sometimes I, hey, I got it on a really good sale. I hate to let it go. Or I wore this back when I weighed 10 pounds less and I know I'm going to get there again. <sighs> let it go. <laughs> If it is not serving a purpose in your home or it is not helping you in any way, it needs to go. And that's the hardest things, my friends, especially sentimental items, especially sentimental items. I had that to deal with when I went through a big downsizing a while back and I had to let things go. I took a lot of pictures. I tried to gift the things away to my children, but if anybody's ever done that, it doesn't always work so well because they don't want the stuff either. Take a picture, cherish the memory, and let it go. Donate it so someone else can make use of it. And when you drop it in that bin, be very careful, as I said before. Don't walk by and pull it back out. You just have to make a decision to do that because it's very tempting. You start second guessing. Don't overthink it, just do it. And another tip is think twice before you bring something into your home. Do you need it? Do I really need it? And sometimes the answer will be yes. I do need this, it's I've been looking for this item. And very often it will be no, I just like it. And living in a very small space helps with that. But just because you have a bigger space doesn't mean that it needs to be filled with everything. So be mindful when you're out and about and think before you bring something home. Does it have a purpose in your home? Does Will it serve a purpose? Some people adopt the rule of one in, one out. So if I buy a new shirt, for example, then I'm going to get rid of one. If I buy something for the kitchen, something else has to go. That's one way you can look at it. But it starts before you ever bring it home. Really think about it. Now, finally, pat yourself on the back for getting this organizing done and decluttering and starting your year off fresh and new. I know it always feels so good. I love the Christmas decorations. First of all, let me just say that I love, 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 love the Christmas trees and the lights and everything. But at the same time, and I, I leave everything up till January 1st, but then I am so excited to go ahead and put that stuff away and have my space back and 
start fresh and new and clean with a brand new year. You'd be surprised at what that does for your well-being. So, Happy New Year, everyone. Have the most blessed New Year. May your life be clutter-free and your mind be fog-free. And may you have clarity and joy every day. Blessings, my friends.